When you fly from big international airports, you can be anywhere in the world in, in 24 hours. You know, I can travel from Amsterdam to where I live in Australia. Um, but arriving in Ladakh and then trekking and driving and trekking more for three days, you realize exactly how remote these are, that when you're well connected, you can fly across the world in 24 hours. But in these regions, even though they're, you know, 100 kilometers apart, it takes days to reach. So the, the journey was, was a real surprise and how long it took to get that last 10% of the journey in was something that I, I won't forget quickly. Yes, they have bare minimum resources, but their hospitality was amazing. Um, you know, sometimes I have like a fancy stuff at my, like good wine or like, like really good chocolate and I always like save it for the best occasions and don't really use it. But these guys, they have such limited things. And when we are there, they are sharing all the biscuits with us, which they got after a four hour trek from Padum. Um, so they were so generous in making the stay comfortable for us that actually I didn't realize that we were living without things that we are used to. So their hospitality really made it a very comfortable experience. So definitely I think we spent uh, close to a day and a half setting up all the um, holders, the solar panel, the um, grid and the connectivity, street lights and everything else. So that itself was very learning for sure and in some sense uh, it was something new for most of us, uh, I think uh, in terms of doing it hands on. When they turn on the lights and the shouts, we were quite far away from the village, but we could hear the shouts of the villagers, and like we were also shouting with you know uh, happiness, and it felt really great looking at the people and the village lighting up. Seeing your work after two three days is is really lots of fun. It was just amazing to see, and we were seeing this from a distance, and we could only just hope to jump up and and, and shout and joy. The best thing for me was when we got the cheer from the monastery um, opposite the village and they all started like cheering for us as well. So it was such a good experience to see the whole community come together and experience that because it's this is just a start for them now. And that's what it made me realize that I see the lights today. That's good for me, but this is going to be a start of something new for the village. It was really a heartwarming experience to go to the schools and see the children in even the most remote locations still able to go to a school for a start, um, which isn't necessarily a given everywhere, uh, and have to have really dedicated teachers who are really trying to do the best, also teachers who are really trying to introduce them to technology, the outside world, uh, and of course computers and computer, the basic principles of computing and the internet. Um, it was, I, was, I was impressed really and by the motivation and the, uh, the enthusiasm of the kids, it, even when they have to travel maybe one or two hours to get to the school, the fact is they're there, they're having fun, uh, they want to learn. I think um, it's, it's essential to understand um, the impact on climate of all forms of power generation and everybody needs to, to realise that. And of course in an in a area like the Himalayas which has more than 300 days of sun per year. Uh, it makes total sense to maximize the use of that any way we can, including in cities. But then, of course, in remote areas, such as the areas we were, where there is anyway no connection, then it makes even more sense to utilize the solar energy as much as we can. 